Okay, great. Yeah, currently it's recording. Do you see that? Um, yeah, terrific. Okay, but All I right. don't know whether uh, where it's going to be saved. It'll it'll save to your Google Drive, and okay. then you can just share it with me. So that's a good solution. Cool. Uh, then also in parallel, because they are going to print later on. Um, well, we are in the hall. Uh, in the afternoon, they are going to print. Um, there will be some additional footage being made out of that, um, and we can share that later on. So do, All right, terrific. You, can, you can add it and uh, everything. So, so let's jump right into it. Recently, your company, Cybe Construction. Siba. Siba. Sorry, I've always been pronouncing no that wrong, I guess. That's why it's capital C, Y, and then capital B, E, Siba. Okay. Is, uh, it just came out of stealth mode, correct? You've been operating kind of quietly for a while, and now you're ready um, to share. No, yeah, we have always been doing um, what we've been doing, um, and uh, not that much in stealth mode, um, only focusing on our work and on operations. So that means acquiring work as well as delivering either the projects or selling the printers, so making them. Um, we have not been searching for media attention or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Very similar to like a Tesla company or something like that, where they don't have much of a marketing budget. Yeah, they, they, we have a zero market, uh, marketing strategy. Um, but I believe that um, we must do amazing stuff um, that is um, competitive and also uh, not being done before. For example, printing in Dubai. Um, and that should um, uh, have a news value. So that otherwise, uh, therefore, press agencies, and et cetera, they will write uh, about that uh, rather than that we are searching for media attention ourselves. Yeah, with the R and Drone project in Dubai, Seabay uh, is one of, the, one of the few companies that's already accomplished a 3D printed structure there with the initiative they have for 25% of new construction to be 3D printed. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. They, they talk about that initiative and so many people bring it up as like a data point, but there's so few companies actually on the ground there uh, putting the putting the concrete on the ground. Yeah, but it's not uh, due to us um, that a building has been printed. It's due to the local authorities, the agencies, in this case, DIWA, Dubai Electricity and Water Authority. Uh, they um, started a open tender and within the tender documents, it was stipulated that the building should be printed. Uh, but ah. it was a pretty, yeah, pretty much a challenge uh, to see how we could achieve that. Um, and also for the governmental agencies there, uh, they are not struggling, but they are searching how can they um, uh, make sure that more buildings are being printed because they must uh, comply with local regulations. Uh, but printing itself is new, so how, how can they test things? How can they specify um, uh, uh, the requirements for such a building? So they are searching currently, uh, and we have been very lucky that uh, because I saw the tender uh, back in 2017, um, I saw also the vision of um, of Dubai announcing that 25% being built uh, by 2030 by means of 3D concrete printing. And we've been very lucky that um, a local construction company and consortium with an architect, they contacted us. Uh, they selected us to print that building. Um, back then in 2016, the tender uh, was um, uh, online um, and being acquired. Uh, not that much pro uh, companies were actually in 3D concrete printing. Um, uh, uh, I believe you had Winsom, uh, you've got Bat Abraham from uh, Slovenia, I believe. Um, you've got Henry Rudenko and our company. And then, of course, Barry Kosnevich um, and, and Enrico Dini. Um, yeah. uh, these were the only ones. Um, uh, 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 yeah, I think we have been lucky. We traveled to there um, and eventually been lucky that we have acquired that project. Yeah, Enrico Dini was one of the first people to answer my LinkedIn messages when I started uh, contacting people in the automated construction mm -hmm. space with uh, his company Dichip. But he's not, is he still involved in his project, you know? Uh, I haven't heard no, much news. I've, been, uh, I've seen him uh, once, twice in Lille um, uh, at the conference. Um, back in 2017, um, also Berukus Nevich presented there. Uh, so in the, some, sometimes there are the conferences in Lille in France or in Denmark in Copenhagen, uh, organized by Henrik. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you meet the same people. Um, yeah, the last I heard he was involved in a coral reef project now. I think he kind of just wanted to 
like help the industry get started and then maybe step away into other areas and uh, do other stuff. It's CBay, when you first got started, it was you and how many initial team members? Me. Just you. <laughs> no. Um, uh, um, I started um, back in 2010. Um, um, uh, my family runs a construction company. That construction okay. company goes back since 1922. So my father is currently the owner um, and my brothers are now taking it over. Um, I was in position to take it over, um, but I was building as project manager while I was studying at the University of Eindhoven, where Theo Salat is professor. Um, back in 2010, I did for my father's company a BIM project, which means um, designing those buildings, housing in this case, uh, by means of 3D. Uh, which in back in 2010 was quite new um, and instead of taking like six months to design and engineer those buildings it took us by organizing it differently just two weeks with the architect a structural engineer um, the installation guys for HVAC and MAP etc um, so that was in wow. 2010 um, and making a 3D design uh, of buildings and then in 2011 and 12 i was building an office building and i had to manage like um, uh, almost 100 construction workers make sure that they would work uh, starting at seven o'clock in the morning um, so i had to follow uh, my courses at the university of eindhoven where i studied um, and then when i got back um, uh, 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 people they made mistakes uh, they were sick uh, they didn't perform well etc so uh, due to that, uh, since I knew how to make a 3D model uh, in the automotive industry, there are a lot of uh, automation with robots. So I started to search um, at the university's database and they cover a lot of science direct other databases of all uh, scientific research, as well as on YouTube about automation in construction. So in 2012, uh, there was a TEDx presentation of Barry Krishnevich and I saw that presentation and I actually thought like, that's not that difficult. You've got some material, you've got some hardware and some software. Mm -hmm. So um, I made a, qu a quick business case. I ran to my father's office and said, we need to focus on 3D concrete printing within the family company. Of course, back then it was 2013, there was a financial crisis in Europe. So instead of also in America, so instead of investing in that kind of technology, he said, I must survive with my company. I don't want to fire people. Uh, so actually, I quit my job and I started Siba. Um, I created some um, models uh, to conceptualize the technology. Because um, you already had experience with the 3D modeling. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> models about what is actually the technology. Oh, okay. So, for example, um, instead of focusing on the technology itself, what we want to do is build faster and cheaper. Uh, the technology 3D printing, as well as parametric design, is just a means to an end. If yeah, maybe I love in that. 20, if in 20 years there is, we can develop an even faster building methodology, we will do so. So we are not in that. We are a 3D printing company. We are just a construction company, a tech company. So that's exactly what I like to say about my YouTube channel. I'm not a 3D printed construction YouTube channel. I'm an automated construction yeah. YouTube channel. And right now, 3D printing is just one of the most promising solutions. If something better comes along, I'll jump ship in a second and go to whatever yeah, is the best right. way. You want to have that flexibility. Um, and yeah. in the end, people don't want to have printers. They want to provide other people with buildings. Um, so. Uh, because um, I'm also backed with a family-owned co construction company with a lot of experience with people, etc., I can quite quickly make a cost analysis uh, yeah. to indicate when you are faster and cheaper. Um, so based on that, I learned that compared with conventional construction methodologies, you must print really fast, which means... Um, dun, dun, dun. I don't know whether you can see it clearly, but for example, um, printing such a wall standing there uh, of around two and a half, maybe three meters, it should be printed just within one hour. Um, if you cannot print that fast, um, you're not compatible from a time perspective and therefore not from a cost perspective with, for example, limestone bricks. Um, if you want to print this fast, so production wise, then the other one is you need a really fast sanding concrete. So instead so, uh, of... Hmm? A wall like that that you just showed me, do you know, is that like maybe one cubic yard of concrete or less than that, half a yard? 
Um, we are in Europe, so we don't, I don't know anything about yards. Um, meter, cubic meter. Uh, this is around uh, uh, one and a half pallet, which is around 1.6 tons of material, which is around uh, one cubic meter, more or less. Okay. And also this one, actually, this wall, um, I don't know whether you can see it um, here. I can. Here? Uh, yes. There is reinforcement in it. So this is something we've done back in 2015, uh, printing with reinforcement cables. Actually, we were back then in the research together with the University of Eindhoven, so we provided how we did it, and they picked it up and based on that printed the bridge. It's terrific that you have like construction in your genetics almost. Uh, your whole family is involved with it. A lot of companies that I talk to about automated construction, I'll get a like kind of feeling from them that they're more of a tech startup or more like more of a like startup kind of oriented. But speaking to you, it seems like you are clearly more construction oriented. And instead of operating like a regular like tech startup, you guys are operating more as like a construction company focusing on projects first and like marketing and the fluffy stuff later. Um, most companies that I speak to, I don't think they have that construction experience in their founder so that should be a, a pretty big advantage for Saib especially I like so we I believe that we have not been able to come this far um, uh, if we don't have that um, heritage um, absolutely if we don't have that kind of experience not to mention uh, the relationships that I'm sure your family has in the construction industry also helpful um, uh, and like I mentioned to go to Dubai and to, to do that first project I've been in Dubai for like 13 years uh, because of um, wow. uh, uh, work-related things. Um, uh, so going to another country in the Middle East, uh, normally you would say, oh, why would you go to there? It's new, etc." But for us, it was like coming home back. And uh, so it was not. Yeah, there. the word for that is serendipity, when everything just fits together perfectly yeah. and you happen to be in the right spot, in the right place, the right time. And then from there, you go from one project to another one. Of course, uh, in 2015, we've been in an accelerator for, uh, for startups. Quite quickly, we learned that actually it's not about printing yourself because then you would earn just a little money. It's better to sell the technology. Um, we have been lucky that based on the project in Dubai and then afterwards the project in Milan and the collaboration with Week in France in 2017 and 18. Um, we sold our first printer to a Japanese precast factory in 2017 delivered that but of course it was the first machine we sold uh, we had to train people we had to think about the manufacturing process which is different than building a building yeah. there are similarities um, uh, but we learned a lot um, and then afterwards we started to sell more printers uh, and currently for example uh, are building the uh, four of them. Uh, one will go shortly go to Australia, another one goes to Paraguay, another one goes to Qatar, and another one goes to Morocco. Wow, that's exciting. Um, yeah. So I don't know whether you can see them here. Yeah, I can see pretty well. Uh, that one uh, goes to uh, uh, Melbourne, then that one goes to Paraguay. We will deliver them in September to a construction company in Morocco and to a university in Qatar. And the and sticker the price on that huh? is 180,000 euros. Yeah, that's the from off sales price. Um, but also we pro provide several options. And those options, for example, uh, that during printing, um, uh, uh, the printer standing on legs, that during printing it goes up in order to extend the reach. Um, uh, and those options, yeah, you, they can be selected. And uh, of course, then the price goes up. Um, the, if you've got a full option printer, like with everything, with silos, etc., then you easily go to the 360,000 euros. Sure. Of course, then uh, everything is automated, which means that your production capacity will increase. And the, what we do with our customers, uh, we've got our own architects and structural engineers. So we've got our own models uh, that of houses. Uh, we've got our own housing concept. We provide them to our customers based on the local construction regulations. We can determine um, uh, when a return of investment can be achieved by purchasing a printer of 180 or 250,000 euros. If you build, let's say, 20 houses, um, uh, and then it will take one two, three, four years 
before you get or gain a return of investment. And Based I think that's going to be in the print volume. Yeah. So and that, that's relevant because since we can determine when approximately a return of investment can be achieved, then based on that, of course, a company can uh, uh, determine, make a decision uh, to purchase such a printer. Yeah, it makes it very investable. Yeah, it, it, it's about business. It's not about doing research and then hopping from one product to another one. Um, here, we ourselves here in the Netherlands, um, we are acting as a general contractor. We've got our own housing concepts of a patio, of a bungalow, etc., row houses, uh, which we are um, uh, uh, working together with housing corporations and build ourselves. Of course, that gives us a lot of uh, experience and uh, credibility. But based on that experience and knowledge, we can better support our clients overseas. For example, currently one printer is going to be shipped to New Zealand to a partner over there. Um, uh, it would be wonderful if they can acquire projects, they can build our houses um, and eventually not working with one printer, but are capable of ordering a second printer in a couple of months. Yeah, um, at least. What? Maybe many more. Maybe many more yeah. than one. But that's the entire idea. Um, and then it's good to have one partner in one certain country. And if they are, if we can enable that they are having success, then they will order a second, the third, and a fourth printer. Uh, their growth will mean our growth. Uh, currently, we call that we're playing the game risk. So you want to have a, a, a dot on every country. Uh, so we create a, a partnership in every country. Um, mostly a construction company. Um, uh, let them work with a local uh, university so that all the uh, testings are being done so that also their students are going to do research on it. Um, eventually, that is a good um, organization like technology provider, local construction company and a university to start build, but also to make sure everything is going to be certified and tested so that it is safe um, and then can grow. Yeah, it's interesting how University of Eindhoven is like such a hot spot for a lot of projects like this. What makes you, any reason for that? Um, Eindhoven is, per definition, a tech environment. You've got a lot of tech companies like ASML, like Philips, and a lot of smaller companies. Um, it's a really good university, um, and not only for construction, but they've got also different uh, departments, uh, faculties uh, in regard of robotic engineering, etc., software engineering. Um, they, I don't know whether they're doing it every year, but there is a, a robotic soccer team. So they program the robots and then they, cool. the robots are playing in between uh, teams of other universities. So it's really a tech-minded university and environment. Um, yeah. Which you was also about, we, are, we are from actually like uh, 30 minutes away, more to the north of Eindhoven. But mm -hmm. um, we are in an uh, industrial zone um, uh, uh, where my father's company is, um, but also a lot of industrial companies uh, for which if we can scale up. So this year we are providing 10 printers. Next year the, the ambition is to do 20 uh, and we want to increase the sales by 100% each year. Um, that means that we need to scale up as well as our partners, uh, our suppliers. Um, for ABB, we use ABB robots. That's quite easy. But for all the other parts, uh, you need capacity to do so. And here in the neighborhood of where we are located, uh, we've got a lot of these kind of companies that co can supply us with all different kind of parts. Yeah, it's great to be in an area where it's like the Silicon Valley of automated construction almost. No, nah, no. Nah. Not quite. <laughs> yeah, no. In the Netherlands, there are a lot of companies that are aiming for 3D concrete printing and automation in construction, whether it is at production sites, so with robots, as well as with parametric design. Um, and we are a pretty small country, so quite quickly you know the people, and the people, yeah, we know each other, um, uh, that are involved in automation uh, of the design and engineering process and production process. Sure. So, um, the way you're talking about scaling and doubling every year, I'm sure you're already considering repurposing some of those robotic arms to build the printers automated. Um, no, we are not. We, we actually, we, uh, instead of the 180,000 euro, which is based on a new robotic system, we can also pro, uh, get a refurbished robotic arm from ABB. Um, that then the price actually goes down. Um, but if we look um, at how long such a new robotic arm and what the um, lifespan is, 
20 years almost. Um, the one that I used to print in Dubai um, was actually a robotic arm that um, was built back in 1999. So currently it's over 21 years and we're still wow. using it. Uh, so uh, the, the, the equipment is pretty durable. Uh, the only thing what we, we need to make sure is that um, uh, it, the, the, the hardware can cope up with the software development. Plus there's no human driver to like drive it into a wall or scratch it or break it or anything. No, yeah, you, you have got a person is actually, wait. Uh, uh, I've got one standing here. Uh, a person okay. is actually um, uh, 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 using it, uh, driving it manually to the right location. Oh, okay. So, um, here you've got uh, the handles. I don't know, do you see? Yeah. Here we've got handles to drive uh, it manually, either on a construction site or on a truck. And then um, these handles are for the three legs um, to raise it and level it. Uh, there is a uh, self-leveling system so that it's going to be leveled automatically. Um, and then yeah, uh, uh, it's about positioning the printer on the right location. So um, if we are in construction, you're always surveying the dots where you want to build something. With printing for us, it's quite similar. Um, so the dots are being placed, for example, where um, this wall wants to stand, uh, that wall, um, and then you touch that uh, with your robotic arm. So joy, uh, uh, with the joystick uh, controlling it to the right location. And then based on that, you align the reality. So where the floor is being built with the digital world of the robot. And then actually uh, afterwards, it's uh, not that much different than, for example, tup, 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 tup. Sure, the alignment is that. You see, you know, you know, you see it uh, here? Yeah. Um, then after the, um, uh, uh, the digital model is being connected with the real world, um, it's about pressing play and then it's going to print. And then that can either be done um, by uh, sacks of 25 kg, or there is a system to place, for example, on the mixing system, uh, uh, their um, mixing system with big bags. And then you've got directly one ton of material and you can print nonstop. And then, yeah, uh, they are currently printing at a speed of 600 millimeters per second. And since you print, we print with a speed of 600 mm per second, um, if we make a 90 degree corner, then uh, a robotic arm is used to that kind of speeds. It can even go 2,500 millimeters per second. If you would go that fast with a gantry system, um, the, down, uh, the dynamic forces on such a system, um, uh, 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 the, the, the hardware cannot cope with that. So if you would go like uh, 600 mm per second and make a corner, a robotic arm is being developed in order to perform in that high speeds. A big gantry system is a lot of weight, and if it goes this fast and needs to stop and make this corner, then the dynamic forces will actually uh, demolish the entire insulation. Or if you want to accelerate again, uh, yeah, you cannot accelerate that fast with a gantry system. That's why we use robotic systems, uh, because they are capable to printing with our material. Um, oh, that's here. Um, and you mentioned uh, printing fast is one of the important aspects. Yeah, for us it is. Job. Uh, for us it is. And when we did the Dubai project, um, uh, uh, it was actually a, bit, a big bluff. Um, uh, because uh, 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 during design and engineering that building, we also designed and engineered um, uh, the, uh, the crawler that I just showed you. Uh, so it was, yeah, um, uh, uh, well, we designed the building. We also had to think how should we build this crawler? Because eventually that crawler with the robotic arm should be capable of building it actually. Um, oh, that one there and, and that one there. Uh, during that design and engineering stage of the building itself, we analyzed also from a structural engineering perspective that if you print layers of like uh, four or five centimeters and it's going to be a building in Dubai, which is extremely warm due to the sun, uh, the temperature stress could be 80 degrees inside such an element. And then a wall element uh, or a layer of just four centimeters over time, uh, because in day, night, summer, winter, it's going to expand and shrink. Uh, eventually, there will be fatigue and then it could be cracking. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why within that building, we printed elements of around two meters each. If we or some other company would print a wall element 
for example, by a gantry, uh, we cannot print such a long element of like 10 meters in length without the dilatation in time, it will probably crack. Uh, that's also a reason why from a construction perspective, uh, we choose for such a robotic arm on a crowder because it can easily move within just half an hour. It's um, uh, uh, assembled and uh, you can start printing. Um, and the elements you're going to print eventually they need a dilatation, so they cannot be bigger than a certain uh, size. So, uh, uh, therefore, we don't believe in gantry systems. Uh, so, you're standing next to now uh, a pallet of your concrete? Yeah. Cool. So, you've developed your own unique solution. Um, I've been searching in 2012 uh, for this material that should be uh, uh, hard within just five minutes. Yeah. So first I contacted uh, the regular co uh, concrete uh, manufacturing plants um, and they, they said, dude, this is not possible. Concrete hards within seven hours, not within seven minutes. So back then I called Lafarge and Holcim. They didn't even merge into one company. Um, they said, they, no, we're not going to do this. It was Holcim in Rotterdam. Um, and so I had to find other companies outside the Netherlands. Yeah. Eventually, I found a company um, in the Europe, um, and they have this material. Um, also, the only company that has this material, also a family-owned company. Um, so we had some meetings, and then we, we, we entered in a collaboration in which we co-developed this material. Um, till day, they are our partner uh, within uh, material development, um, and, and uh, they produce the material. Um, and we are currently developing other cyber mortar mixtures uh, in order to address other markets, uh, because you don't need this material, for example, uh, in the Indian market or in Indonesia. Uh, material prices are very sensitive in those markets, so you want to reduce it. Um, and as we speak, we are also making sure that this material, because we're not shipping it from Europe to New Zealand or to Paraguay, etc., uh, we make sure that the cyber motor is being produced locally with local aggregates. And this is something we're doing, for example, in New Zealand, in Japan, in India, in Paraguay, and in Dubai, in the UAE, uh, so that locally the cyber motor is being produced. Also, so when you get a customer in a new area, a new country, you set up the infrastructure to source the materials locally? Yeah, we have the local uh, production, uh, concrete um, factories uh, with sourcing, uh, yeah, with making sabi mortar as much as possible with local materials. And also we see that as a result thereof, new kind of developments uh, 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 are being created. For example, in the UAE, we're looking to use also June sand from the desert. Uh -huh. uh, they have got a lot of that kind of sand. So uh, we are experimenting with that. Um, yeah. Someone in the YouTube comments told me that when you print with dune sand, or sorry, not when you print with dune sand, but traditionally when you use dune sand in concrete, it's very brittle and it right. doesn't harden strong enough. Right, uh, because the shape of the sand is, we, we, we like to have um, in our cyber mortar 70% of sand or sand of, or grind okay. um, and the rest is a special compound. And that 70% should be very coarse. Um, and June sand is really round, so it's difficult uh, to replace everything. Um, uh, but you can, yeah, by changing our compound, the Cybe compound, uh, which makes it fast setting and also the, which is the binder, uh, we can see uh, how much of the June sand we can add. Yeah, interesting. So the binder that makes it cure faster also potentially will allow for dune sand to be implemented. Something that currently we are um, doing research on. I'm sure that would be huge. It's so expensive for Dubai to import sand. Um, yeah, a lot of silica sand doesn't come from um, uh, the UAE itself. So they're importing a lot. And that's interesting because we are addressing not only a housing crisis, we need a lot of buildings, uh, but also a lot of countries, they've got a resource um, uh, crisis. Um, uh, for example, our Japanese partners back in 2017 and 18, uh, they got their silica sand. J Japan doesn't have those resources. Um, they've got their silica sand from China. In 2018, China blocked the export of silica sand. So we wow. had to find of other uh, resources, aggregates, uh, to make the cyber motor with. Uh, you see that uh, uh, yeah, more and more that countries block export uh, of sand. Uh, so playing with your mixture, make sure that local additives or aggregates can be used, and a variety of them uh, is in the end, in the future, more necessary. Um, it's, uh, Certainly. 
three things um, uh, because we want to build houses but we do so um, it's not about printing concrete it's about solving three issues that we as a global um, uh, society are facing uh, in construction currently there is a big labor shortage uh, skilled labor as well. So um, uh, with printing, you need less labor um, and can increase your production capacity. There is a housing crisis. In, for example, in Indonesia, there is a shortage of 10 million houses, as well as in Iraq. Here in the Netherlands, we need 1 million houses. Um, and if, if you look at the capacity of the current construction industry, they cannot deliver that amount of houses. So as an industry, we need to change to automation, whether it is printing or laying bricks by robots, I don't mind. <laughs> we need to automate. Um, and then, of course, there is this resource uh, issue that uh, we don't have sufficient materials. So we need to think in a circular way, which means we need to use recycled materials or the elements that we are printing. Uh, you can assemble it to, as a building, but also deassemble it and then assemble maybe in 20 or 30 years a new building out of it. That's also why we don't focus only on 3D concrete printing itself. Within the structure, we also use, for example, within the wall elements, we use wood, wooden beams. And those wooden beams, we can easily connect them, the concrete wall with the wooden beams, etc., in order to make a building. And then later on, it will be easy, easier because concrete gets hard. You need to demolish it, but wood, um, with a connection, you can take it out and in afterwards. Um, so the housing concepts that we make, they're based on modularity. They're based on what, you said? They're based on modularity, so that um, it's not only about how you build it with printing concrete, but also how you design sure. them, so that eventually in the future can, you can easily deassemble them and build a new building out of it, rather than demolishing everything. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I heard too, occasionally for permitting purposes, you'll have to destroy a model of what you build um, before, you, before it's certified. Uh, so if you have to destroy one, and everything's modular and you have a lot of similar modular pieces, then you can just print one extra and then have the six right. modular parts. Indeed. Uh, what we've done for the Vergade Fabriek that we've built last year um, as a general contractor, uh, we actually, uh, there were two ways. Either you design and engineer a wall and then indeed, uh, and here, uh, that's actually the, the, the leftover of that wall. Uh -huh. um, uh, there was an entire wall standing there. And with a research institution, uh, they tested it uh, together with, with Venom Bulls. And um, in the end, it was like twice as strong. And then it's a Eurocode uh, structural design by testing. Uh, a um, municipality can permit it. And that's one way uh, when, for example, such a wall element and the connections, uh, they don't comply with any standards. Another way is make sure that you design and engineer a wall so that it uh, complies with standards. For example, the building in Dubai, uh, we got it permitted um, because in every wall there was a concrete column and a concrete beam. And then actually you've got a standard RC uh, reinforced concrete uh, structure, which is quite common. Sure. Uh, of course, then you have got an RC frame and printed concrete walls. So you've got a double structure. So um, there is still room to make it more efficient. Yeah, it almost you could drive a truck into it and it would still be standing maybe. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> True. So you found the material and your company is more focused on developing the printer technology and sourcing the printers rather than trying to do the material engineering yourself, you just keep up with the developments and figure um, out what the business is. No, what we do is uh, we organize the company into units. So of course, we've got a sales unit, and then uh, if a printer is being sold or a project is being acquired, then there is a contract. So we've got a contract manager, and then we've got four operational units. One unit is design and engineering of buildings, bridges, manholes, etc. Uh, currently, they are a team of like eight people, and everyone is from outside the Netherlands. Uh, so India, um, uh, China, uh, Ecuador, uh, Latvia, etc. Uh, then um, they design and engineer complete buildings then uh, the designs they make are being printed by our printing team. Um, then, of course, there is also a design and engineering team for the hardware and the software. So we've got software developers, mechanical engineers, robotic engineers. Um, they design and engineers, that kind of stuff. And we've got a manufacturing team, and they're manufacturing those printers. 
Um, then we've got a trainer um, to train uh, the people that are being, uh, uh, yeah, going to be the operator. There is a standard 10-day training course. Uh, normally here in the Netherlands, due to COVID, um, we are now focusing to do the training remote. Um, and we're all in the same boat. Uh, 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 for example, the, the printer that goes to New Zealand, uh, our partner, he is not coming to the Netherlands and we are not able to enter New Zealand. So we have to do the training remote. So we're making a, um, a, a online course um, so that uh, they already can do the tier theory. Uh, and then eventually when the pr tra printer is there uh, doing the practical uh, uh, training, um, then the uh, is also a service level agreement team. So uh, there are bi-weekly meetings with all our partners. Um, we are um, uh, 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 surveying, analyzing what they are printing. We are looking how we can support them either with design and engineering or with soft software updates. Um, yeah, uh, that's actually. So now that you've made all this progress and you got the, a huge warehouse with a ton of people working developing printers, what does your father think about the company when he initially kind of didn't see the future vision? It's almost like you told him about Bitcoin before Bitcoin got big. Um, uh, my brothers are currently taking over the company. They actually did. Um, so they're focusing on, 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 on their, their work, uh, their stuff. Um, for them, it's still um, uh, 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 um, yeah, not that realistic. Uh -huh. um, and they're busy with their company. It's, it's a big company. So uh, their focus is different. Also, uh, of course, we are having dinner, etc. So we are discussing those things. Um, the way how they organize and with what kind of people they work is completely different than our team and our way of working. Um, so, yeah, we see how we... Uh, we're they're actually in offices over there um, and we see of each other what we're doing and, and that's it and for now I think that as CBay and automated construction expand in the future every construction company is going to have to implement automation and I think that it, I, whether it's in our lifetimes or down the line I bet we'll see a future where CBay and your brother's construction company are working very closely together again in the future. They're, they're just ultimately going to need some kind of automated technology. Um, uh, but here in the Netherlands, what we're doing, um, it's about credibility. Um, I believe um, in order to be a good company, to develop a good company, you must have a strong home market. This means we must be strong in the Netherlands. At this moment, um, in the end, it's about turnover. Um, yeah. Our turnover must grow. It's not about getting investments and getting investments. Uh, other companies, they get a lot of investments, but some companies, they got like 3 million investments, but in the end, no projects, so they quit. Um, you must have turnover because that means you can um, uh, make a business and it means you have, uh, can provide benefits. You're faster, you're cheaper, more sustainable, etc. cetera. Um, getting an investment doesn't say anything about that. Um, and what we want to do here in the Netherlands, because currently uh, I think 90% of our turnover is due to selling printers or having projects abroad in India, in France, etc. Uh, so for next year, we are currently acquiring um, uh, projects to build houses. Uh, we must stabilize our turnover so that 50% is being by means of selling printers. You know, um, one is uh, uh, being sold from off uh, 180,000 euros. We're doing 10 of them uh, this year. Um, uh, uh, next year, we want to grow 100%. Uh, and we must set balance that with also building houses. Which so double the houses and double the printers. And building a house is, uh, as we calculated it, and of course, we can see the, the market numbers um, in the Netherlands, how costly, what the cost is of building a house. We are like 10 to 20% cheaper. We are way faster because we build everything uh, in a pre-cost situation and we just assemble it uh, building within a couple of days. Um, that's beneficial. So currently we are acquiring um, more housing projects with housing corporations to build social housing here in the Netherlands. Um, uh, I think for next year that's really relevant in order to have a um, a solid base in the Netherlands. Of course, we believe, or I believe in that will get, generate credibility. We are building actual buildings, actual people are going to live in it. Uh, there are customers, uh, housing corporations that are going to pay for it. It's a solid business case uh, that will generate a lot of credibility. As a result, um, we can better help partners that purchase a printer because we can explain how they should build buildings and earn a living with it. Um, yeah, which that's means, great. If you guys are operating 50% printing houses, 50% selling printers, 
that's so much credibility because you're just demonstrating that you're kind of your best customer. You're putting the printers you have to work. And if there's any issues, you'll be the first people to know how to solve it. Yeah. Uh, and then we see a printing, a building is mainly a concrete wall. Um, so for the future, we see that here in the Netherlands, a building is not only a wall, a floor, a door, and that kind of stuff. Also really important are the installations for yeah. heating, cooling, and ventilation. So currently we are looking um, whether we can extend our business operations in not only selling printers or building a house, uh, also to make sure that we develop the installation ourselves. Sure. I'm just wondering, uh, how many brothers do you have? Two. Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest. I, I guess that. I'm the oldest and I have three little brothers. Ah. <laughs> But uh, the youngest is actually only 12 years old, so they're not starting any construction companies yet. Uh -huh. But if you're the oldest, you have also had uh, the uh, most difficult time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to say uh, with, when you're the oldest, you made your parents' parents. Before you were born, they weren't parents yet. True. And, but also you need to clear the path for your brothers. Yeah. Yep. The guinea pig. Indeed. Uh, indeed. But it teaches you... Uh, it teaches you how to find your own path and do things a little differently. And I can see how you're taking that into your business as opposed to just stepping into what your, the rest of your family was doing. You're looking at the different options and trying to think, how can you do it better? How can you do it differently? And you're looking towards the future because the automation is going to intercept in construction eventually. Every other industry has seen a huge interception between automation True. and efficiency per laborer. But what is also important is that um, in every other industry, automation uh, intercepted. But we don't should not forget that the construction industry is completely different. There are so many different um, regions and in a region, the region determines how you build and there are different regulations, etc. Of course, in the car manufacturing industry, uh, you've got just a handful of big factories and they produce like cars, cars, cars. Um, for the construction industry, it's completely different. I believe also automation will have a big role, but of course, uh, always there will be this labor intensive way of production. Um, you cannot, it, it won't be that uh, printing concrete or welding or whatever, robotics in construction will take everything over. In the end, um, uh, uh, still people will build manually. Uh, that will always be the case for the upcoming years. Um, and, and a building is currently also being built out of different kind of methodologies. Uh, here in this hallway, you've got a steel frame, but you've got the walls are being built out of bricks. There is a, a concrete beam. So it's an integration of different kind of methodologies. And I believe that uh, uh, now with printing concrete or a different automation construction methodology, still it will be the same. It will be printing concrete combined with other construction methodologies in order to build an entire house or a bridge or whatever. Yeah, I agree strongly, especially with what you said about how you're always going to have some houses built manually. There's so many different kinds of houses. People say people see machines like this and they're like, uh oh, there go all the construction jobs. And then they're, they're not realizing, like, think of how many different kinds of houses there are. Yeah. Why would everybody in the world all of a sudden just decide they like one type of house? You don't need to convince every single person to live in a 3D printed house. If it's one percent of the houses, it's going to be a huge enormous multi-billion dollar industry for if you can achieve as a company to build one percent of all the buildings globally oh my god you'd be the biggest then, company in the world maybe right but that means you've got a lot of turnover and, and then you've got a big impact um, whether in the end it will be us as Seabit to build those houses or a partner is using our technology and so course, you were mentioning the kind of social projects and building houses is that different yeah, no, from these, these are social, it's social housing which means that uh, the price of the house for building it should not extend a certain amount of money mm -hmm. and that means that a housing corporation they pay you it shouldn't be uh, more pricely than a certain amount of money and eventually the housing corporation which is partly a governmental institute here in the netherlands they rent it to people uh, that are in the lower class of the society mm -hmm. yeah we have a similar program in america um, Section 8 housing, they'll, uh, the government will pay the rent and you kind of pre-screen the tenants. 
But so I'm wondering, is that are those houses like individual houses or is that the G7 apartment complex on your no, website? Um, these houses are indeed um, uh, uh, not individual houses. They're they attached houses, so row houses. Mm -hmm. uh, the apartment complex um, last year in 2019, we partnered together with Sarpoja Palunji, a major construction company in India. But they also have got uh, projects in uh, the UAE, in Saudi Arabia, etc. Um, they're they're really huge. <laughs> they are building two hundred thousand houses each year wow. in India, which is like three times the total amount of buildings that the entire construction industry in the Netherlands is building. <laughs> <laughs> it's really that's that's true. so. They are thinking in totally different um, scale. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's yeah. I cannot compare it with any com company here in the Netherlands, that, and that's nice. Um, so um, with them, we partnered um, first. Uh, they wanted to purchase a printer, but then there, there were some difficulties to import a printer into India uh, due to uh, customs, etc. So we decided to also design and engineer an apartment complex, which was a G plus three. Um, we've done that in uh, three months with our team, uh, working together with them. Um, uh, and then we had the G plus three. So we saw we had a meeting here in July last year, and then there were some things to optimize. And then we said, okay, but then in that case, instead of just optimizing the G plus three to find a location near Mumbai, um, uh, uh, maybe we should make. And they asked that, could you make? Uh, do you have faith in that? Make a G plus seven apartment complex, get rid of the RC frames. Uh, so a completely new um, uh, 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 structural principle, um, make sure that all the material is uh, being uh, produced locally. Um, so yeah, that's the current assignment. We Get rid of the RC frame so the structure would be completely dependent on the printed concrete or a steel structure? Yeah, uh, a, a printed uh, structure with steel. And that is something we're currently developing and testing cannot say uh, or show that much about it. Yeah, and it's all, also not only being printed. Um, and um, so currently, and also not only printing the wall elements as well as the floor elements. Um, so we started with that together with them back in December this year, um, had a meeting with them in February, also to visiting the project site to see how they currently are building, etc. That was in February and then in March COVID came. Um, they are in a very heavy lockdown, um, so uh, since then it's pretty much uh, the communication on hold. Uh, we are currently prototyping, uh, so making the right uh, technology, the printers and the other robot that is doing something, um, uh, testing the elements, and I hope that COVID uh, will be quickly gone or gone, uh, that the lockdown is uh, uh, and the, the measurements in India are, are under control. Uh, so that we have uh, can have uh, normal communication again, and by the end of this year, uh, hopefully, um, uh, restart uh, the full collaboration. Uh, it was uh, envisioned uh, that by this September we would build that G plus seven apartment complex. Uh, yeah, currently that's <laughs> since March on hold. So I hope, and that's with some projects uh, or uh, partnerships. Um, we're just standing still. Um, which means in other countries, um, they're off lockdown and they're now progressing. So a lot of people in India reach out to me on LinkedIn or email and they ask about apartments. They want to build uh, like scale housing or they have so many people. Like you said, they're building yeah. millions of houses. Um, it's I always tell them nobody's really doing apartments. Nobody's 3D printing big scale apartments. But now I can tell them that uh, that Saib's already or Cbase already developed a, a project. When do you yeah, expect yeah. that to break ground? Do you think within? Uh, we actually, that is one of our um, main projects that should be successful, because we see um, uh, currently we are hiring a business developer um, uh, in the Netherlands. You've got a center for economics for construction. Um, we are in contact with a lot of major construction companies and getting a lot of uh, economics uh, information about those markets in India and in Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, etc., etc. So we also see similarities. For example, we see that um, uh, uh, the buildings they built in parts of India are quite similar as buildings they built in Indonesia. So actually what we design and engineer from some end, uh, we can reuse. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can reuse the business case for India 
and copy paste that for Indonesia. Yeah, if that project goes well, I think you'll do well over your goal of 100% growth because there'll be so many companies that see that project in India, Indonesia, they're going to want to replicate it. Uh, yeah, they only need to purchase a printer. But also, for example, currently one of the printers being developed to go to Paraguay. Um, uh, uh, within that, they are building, our client is a community builder. They're building a new community of, um, in the end, in the future, 35,000 people need to live there in that village. Okay. They just started the building. Um, so we're going to print by the end of this year, beginning of next year, the first houses. Um, and we in july august we trained um uh, uh, the operators they just traveled back to paraguay um so there we are going uh, we are going to enable them to print the community uh, we design and engineer those houses as well as part of the master plan um that will also lift everything off what's the minimum number of operators required uh, we we always do a competition um i, I think three of our employees are capable of printing alone um, but normally, uh, also with good work ethics, <laughs> you need like two people. What if, could you do it all by yourself possibly, or is that oh, just no, uh, like myself and to our robotic engineer, um, and another employee, we can work, we can operate everything alone. Uh, but it's a hard work. You really need to know what yeah. to do and when to do it. Um, and, and, but yeah, it's doable. But also, um, it also has to do with safety. Uh, always, because uh, what we managed to do is to have such a robotic arm without any fences. Um, and we are able to do so um, uh, 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 from a safety perspective that whenever, all the time, one of the uh, robotic engineers is holding the safety button so that when something yeah, uh, somebody gets hit or something, sure. uh, or it comes too close, then that is automatically going on safe. Yeah, that's important. So that's and really a full-time job. It also, depends on, it also depends on what kind of options um, are being selected. Um, uh, uh, if you indeed have the full option, you only need to position the printer on the right location, measure it in, and then afterwards just press play and all the other stuff is being done automatically. Uh, in order with sensor technology, we measure the, the, the temperature of the water and outside temperature. Based on that, we can determine the right mixing variables. Uh, with this uh, big bag solution, uh, you have one or two big bags and you, you print such a wall with that amount of material. Um, the rest is being done automatically. Cool. Also interesting, on all our printers, um, we've got those closets, um, a, a boxes, they um, retrieve all the data of all the prints. So if our customers are printing, all the information like the coordinates, etc., the temperatures, etc., they're being saved. We retrieve that back in our database. Based on that, we can optimize our technology. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. That's also one of the reasons we work with ABB robots, because ABB is like located in most countries. So if something of the robot would be broken or need maintenance, there is a local ABB office that can send directly robotic engineers uh, instead of that we need to travel from the Netherlands to Japan or to wherever. So it's not only about printing that wall, it's in order to build up a company that is selling printers, you need to address and organize a lot a lot of stuff more sure so you're not currently seeking any investors outside investment you're just seeking more projects more printers to sell um, when I started in 2013 I quit my job and um, I said uh, that can I loan some money he said dude uh, if you want to run a business you must have customers customers will pay you and there is your money so make sure you've got customers um, uh, 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 it's also about uh, my father told that in 2013 what do you want do you want to have a big investor that is eventually controlling what you're doing or do you want to control it yourself and I don't like people to control what I'm doing so we must focus on business uh, having customers make sure that our customers can earn money with it and then we can grow throughout sales um, as a result 
uh, having a positive turnover, uh, increasing, um, having a positive ca cash flow, etc., uh, which we can use for development, uh, research and development. So uh, we don't need an investor for um, uh, for financials. That sounds terrific, especially because some people speculate that some people are investing in these automated construction companies in order to repress their innovation. It's like big construction companies that build a lot of houses and charge yep. a lot of money for the labor. Some say they're investing millions of dollars in some of these companies and then forcing them to only work on small projects so that the technology doesn't like take off as quickly. I, I, I believe that uh, as long as we can stay independent, we can focus on um, have fun, but also be amazing. Always doing something new, what nobody else has done at that point. Um, make sure we've got a um, sustainable business. Eventually, we will grow and we can make an impact. Um, yeah. That's most important for now. If we would uh, get involved with an investor, then they will have a lot of control. And then we cannot do our, our stuff that we are good at. Um, we are really tech-minded. Uh, we are good in construction itself as well as architecture and etc uh, we are no yeah, normally when you've got a big investor uh, they bring out, out a lot of people with suits and we have got a kind of an allergy for people with suits um, I'm within the current team almost the oldest uh, the rest is like in between 18 and 30 years and uh, we've got wow. a very young and dynamic team building in Saudi Arabia and Dubai and Milan and um, it's really tremendous uh, amazing to do that with such a team that young it's also interesting to see that team growing and getting more professional and um uh, 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 yeah, more professional and the culture is developing I'm yeah certain. true uh, our company culture is developing and of course we also need to address because from currently almost 28 people um they are from not only from the netherlands they're from several different countries, uh, India, China, Latvia, France currently started for new people. Um, uh, so it's also interesting to work with those people, uh, as well as working with uh, 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 partners all over the world. It's such an exciting field. I'm sure you get a lot of requests, people that want to work for you. Um, yeah, that um, uh, we've got like every week um, around 200 to 500 emails. We get wow. them in our info box. That's either for I want to work for at Siba. Um, I can Siba print the project uh, or I want to purchase a printer or graduate students that are doing their uh, research thesis about 3D concrete printing. Uh, we need information. Um, and I'm sure over time, the number of emails is just going up, up, up. Yeah, but I hope that by, that, that by then also the amount of employees will grow, the team will grow so that we can still keep on addressing all those emails. Yeah. So, yeah. But for now, I think we can be happy uh, about uh, the things we have been capable of achieving um, and being happy with the companies that currently we're working with, um, uh, uh, with our current team, uh, the developments that we are um, uh, currently in. Um, of course, COVID uh, in the last couple of months has been pretty difficult, I think, for all. Also from a deep business perspective, um, but still by the end of this year, 100% uh, turnover growth. Uh, currently, we are now in August, tomorrow it will be September. We are uh, wrapping up this year. So we are finishing all the things we're currently doing and we're already pre uh, preparing for next year um, to see um, uh, uh, how we can acquire the sales, how we uh, must organize the production of the printers, etc. So, yeah. Yeah. So you haven't, there's no pr Seabay printer in America yet? Uh, we've sold two, um, okay. one to a, a construction company in Texas and one to a construction company in California. Um, they have been, especially in California, they have been struggling um, due to COVID. Um, we are in communication again with them and we start building that printer hopefully by the end of September, beginning of October. And then by the end of this year, maybe the beginning of next year, it will be shipped. Um, and for Texas, it's actually the same. Uh, so I hope that it will be shipped by the end of this year uh, or beginning of next year. Um, with our housing concepts and the designs we are making ourselves, uh, we can help them uh, so that they can st start building uh, houses. Uh, and of course, also um, uh, people from out of the States, they're contacting us whether we can build their house. So we are connecting them with those uh, uh, construction companies 
uh, those two so that they can build their uh, those houses. Yeah, that's exciting. So if somebody wants to buy a printer from you right now and they have the money ready, how long does it take for them to get it? Order being placed, received first down payment. It takes, uh, depending on the options, three to four months. Then it's ready here. And then normally there is directly a training, 10 day training course here at our facilities um, for up to four uh, team members of uh, our client's team. And then it will be shipped. Um, yeah, depending on location and how you ship the printer, that can take uh, one week or two months. Um, then also it's possible that we fly with the printer uh, uh, when it arrives uh, to the location to install it and to help them printing the first building. So from down payment to make sure that they're up and running and start printing takes six months. That means mm -hmm. after those six months they can start earning money and depending on the amount of projects and the size of projects, a return of investment should be achieved in a couple of years. Sure. I mean, a couple of years, even if your printer's running 24 hours a day, it, it seems to me like it could be achieved a lot faster than years. Yeah, no, uh, you're, they are earning money based on uh, selling a, a house. Uh, so they need to build like 20 to 30 houses. Of course, uh, they are selling houses for less than the conventional industry, but within it there is um, a, 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 the rent of the printer and with the rent of the printer. So they must um, use the printer every day in order to achieve it. In, uh, yeah, it depends on the economy in which country. It can be achieved within two years or four years. Uh, it, there are uh, different um, uh, economic factors uh, that influence that. I'm thinking bigger construction companies, bigger traditional construction companies, uh, maybe are going to be a little stuck in their ways and cumbersome. And so they might implement the technology, but since they're not starting from the ground up, focusing around it, they yeah. might have trouble realizing some of the efficiencies that are going to be available. Uh, true. Um, uh, 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 what is a good uh, metaphor? If you use your printer still in a, a conventional way, then actually you won't be cheaper because concrete is concrete. You still need an amount of material. Um, uh, what the technology allows, um, uh, uh, and that's the change in between the second and third uh, industrial revolution and the fourth, uh, you also must change the way how you organize. So the people that are working with it, uh, the way how you c communicate, uh, as well as how you share information. If you don't do those three, and that is something I've learned uh, within the BIM project back in 2010 within uh, my father's company. If you use new technology, but you don't you change the way you organize, communicate and share information with your partners, then actually you will never be um, a, a cheaper or more uh, f f or faster. Yeah, I'd like to buy a printer myself within the next couple of years um, when I kind of have like the, when I feel ready, I guess. Um, but I'm like thinking 20 houses, if the, if the whole process from the ground up is really focused around getting the efficiency out of the 3d printer and minimizing the labor hours and it's multiple projects, if it's 20 houses, maybe you can do them all on the same site and get realized some efficiencies of scale. Uh, I don't know. I would, I would hope that at least in America, maybe, and probably the Netherlands as well, you could achieve profitability with less. Yeah, sure. Just because uh, of the labor cost. What's really important in that regard is, um, and that's in the automotive industry, uh, the, the automation industry, and they call this the overall equipment effectiveness. That's also why a gantry system, if you print, for example, the walls, and then it is a two-story building, then when you build the floor, your printer is not doing anything. So it's not efficient, uh, it's not effective. What you want you, for your equipment that you purchase in order to gain a good return of investment to make sure that every hour that it is standing on the construction site, it's always printing. Um, so it's yeah, the overall equipment effectiveness. For example, within that apartment complex in India, uh, in order to achieve a G plus seven, we are building three cost elements, one, two, three, four on day one our concrete is load bearing within a couple of hours. So we can hoist that in the morning of day two on the right location with a construction crane. Then the printer is capable of printing a wall element uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Based on that, you can within just eight hours create a, a, a very efficient uh, construction sequence.
Yeah, most construction companies I've seen are pretty bad at maximizing their equipment. They'll rent something, a piece yeah. of equipment for like a week, and they'll right. use it for like one day or something like that. Uh, for example, a construction train on a job site is not continuously hoisting. And if you look from an automation perspective and you use your op the, the overall equipment effectiveness, then actually you can change the way you build and be more efficient. And then in order to be more efficient, it doesn't matter that, for example, the concrete, this concrete is like four to five times more expensive. Uh, so the printed wall, if you look at the direct material cost, it's four times more expensive. But in order, by, by being more efficient, more effective, you're reducing so much other costs uh, that in the end, you're 10, 20, 30 percent cheaper. Plus, that's the cost of the material right now when it's kind of like a niche. And yeah, when it grows, I think it'll become much more reasonably priced. True. There are a lot of ways in order to reduce the amount of uh, the, the cost of the material, but also think about currently you're printing a layer of five centimeters. We can easily print a layer of three centimeters, which, which will reduce two fifths of the amount of material you use. That's also about reducing costs. So we know a lot of these um, uh, uh, cost factors that we can play with in order to reduce costs and increase efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah. So three centimeters would be enough to achieve a structural wall. Um, the, no, the three uh, millimeter, the thirty millimeter, the three centimeters. Um, that will be like uh, the printed formwork. Then you can use an RC frame in it, um, or within the uh, project in Sapoji Palungi. Indeed, the wall is three centimeters, mm -hmm. and then we do something in the corners to make sure that it is load bearing, um, and that it, uh, in Mambe uh, you've got an earthquake category three class. Uh, so you need also um, your shear walls, etc. So there are some uh, structural principles in that. Mm -hmm. We are glad that we can develop that ourselves because we've got three structural engineers within our team um, working together with a robotic engineer, with the architect, etc. Uh, and I think also that um, a multidisciplinary team having good people on every spot um, we can do a lot of stuff ourselves and we can focus on r d every day um, and really achieving something uh, instead of only having an engineer and a structural engineer will only do the same thing but by communicating with other people um, uh, they learn uh, different things they get different insights and as a result we can keep on being innovative it seems like you really enjoy being in the industry you have um, I worked at my father's company. I built uh, a big office building. Uh, I was studied for two days. I did a master's degree at the University of Eindhoven. And actually, I thought, oh, maybe I can take over this company. But then it will take me 10 years to have taken over the company. There, I need to work together with directors, etc. And then I thought, nah, this is not what I like. Uh, so then I thought, what is really important in life, in my life, as well as in yours and in other ones? I want to have fun. I want to do amazing stuff. I'm building an office building. Eventually, I was 23, was not that amazing anymore because more office buildings are being built. And if you've done one, the second and the third is always the same. Uh, so that's not amazing. Um, stay happy. Um, I can have fun every evening to go to the bar and drink beers. Uh, but on the long run, that doesn't make me happy. Uh, so it should be in balance and live long. So live a healthy life. Um, so actually, um, I figured out that slogan. It's in everywhere uh, in our emails, on our website, um, our team. Uh, and we're always having meetings one on ones every month are we still doing amazing stuff uh, do we have fun um, uh, uh, we know that we are a different generation the generation Y we're young people so uh, we value different things than the older people um, uh, but that is still indeed uh, the aim um, to do these amazing things uh, with amazing people uh, we found to do so within concrete printing which from concrete printing, I think 2017 more is to becoming a tech company in construction and actually doing everything, whether it is parametric design, printing concrete, uh, doing something with reinforcement, um, building ourselves or selling printers. Uh, and every time we want to do is we add something to that. For example, recently uh, we launched uh, the Siba library, our own library for our customers. Uh, at which they can download uh, the uh, principal details. Um, uh, they can download different models so they don't need to design and engineer them themselves. Oh, really cool. I've been waiting for somebody to finally do that. 
Um, yeah, and, and we also learn a lot. Uh, we, for example, we printed elements, we shipped them to New Zealand and our partner in New Zealand tested them. We get the results back, the walls, how strong they are. We share those results with our partners in Japan because they've got the same uh, 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 questions. That sure. means that our Japanese partners, they don't need to do, develop and test that themselves. And that is something we do with all the partners. So we are sharing a lot. We're creating this community. Uh, and since we have sold uh, a printer to every continent except Antarctica, um, soon they will be there in every continent. We are they are really building stuff. Our Japanese partners, they are currently building a similar uh, factory plant as this building. Um, and all the walls are currently being built by means of concrete printing. You said soon you'll be there in every continent. You're going to print in Antarctica? No, uh, except Antarctica. Oh, okay, really, okay. That, that's the only one. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Don't no, forget about them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, true. Um, uh, Paraguay is actually the last. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, and that's also uh, puts us in a position to learn how they built in those countries. Based on that, we gain so much knowledge uh, that we can also uh, support others. Uh, for example, in, um, in uh, India, they don't use insulation, but there is monsoon, so they have got specific regulations towards um, uh, uh, waterproofing. Because if it is raining very badly, the rain should not enter the building. Those details that we're developing for that country, uh, we can also use them here in the Netherlands for raining proofing. So we learn a lot. Um, and yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, the first ones in each area are going to be so much more difficult than the next project, the second project, the third project. These municipalities in these countries, they may have never heard of this kind of technology. And after it's done once and they see it's in the news of their country, really printed, whatever, then towns, I think, will really want to implement the technology because they're going to want to get in the news too. And they're going to want to seem forward thinking and they're going to want to be on top of the latest trends. Yeah, uh, if we're currently our commercial manager um, for the Netherlands, He's got meetings with several uh, housing corporations in several municipalities and um, uh, provinces. Uh, and the first question is always, would we be the first? <laughs> but yeah, that only one can be the first. So yeah, um, but it's an interesting thing. Uh, but it's what I always say, it's not important to be the first. As yeah. long as we can be the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, until the 100th. Because if we can achieve that, that means that, okay, we're not the first. But if we can be the second until the number 100 and everything in between, we've got a solid business. And that's yeah, more important. Uh, it's I nice to have the attention and, and, and to have like the coverage. Ah, we are the first in Mexico and ah, we get this amount of millions of dollars or whatever. But in the end, if you don't have a solid business, if you cannot um, organize that, you can hire an army of people. But it doesn't say anything. In some of my courses at, in college, I took some, uh, it was like technology innovation management classes. We were looking at case studies of yeah. different companies innovating and uh, it, almost every single time, it's not the first company to do something that's the company that becomes very successful at it. It's the second or the third because they learn from the mistakes of the first one, expensive mistakes sometimes, and they're able to grow and develop past that. So it, the first time is always, uh, always the hardest, but. I mean, one thing you mentioned, there can only be one first. That's true, but it's also not true because there's the first project that's 3D printed and then there's the first project that's structurally really, printed. That I'm really, uh, uh, the, uh, currently you see a lot of in the news, the first printed bridge. Every which single one is the first one. Which, which they say is in Schemert by the University of Eindhoven. A yeah. uh, year before that, Ashona printed the bridge, which is placed in Madrid. But the, the media is covering the, 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 the second bridge as the first bridge. So it, there is a lot of bullshit in the media. Well, they have some, they usually have some kind of like some reason. It's the first, like it's the first one and then parentheses yeah, with right. a rebar. Or it's the first one uh, in parentheses with two stories. Or mm -hmm. it's the first. And that's good. It's good for me too because that's a good title. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Just they're all the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely an exciting field to, to be watching because every, everybody's growing quickly and the interest is growing quickly. It's, it's like I'm surprised that more people aren't interested in it because construction, it's like the biggest three industries in the world. And mm. 
it's just been so left out of technology and innovation. It's really difficult um, uh, 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 that people from out of construction, uh, they've got an education, a master degree or a bachelor degree in which they learned how to build a house. They don't know anything about robotic engineering, software engineering, mechanical engineering, etc. Um, uh, uh, um, and the other way around as well. Uh, the people that are in robotic engineering, they've got uh, their, their, their business cases, uh, um, their uh, references during their courses, they're in automation, which is car manufacturing, etc. They don't have any user cases. In, 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 so it's quite difficult to get those two markets together. Um, and then uh, uh, what I see also is that a lot of our competitors, um, uh, colleagues, uh, they don't have real experience in construction. So for them, I can imagine that's really difficult to uh, uh, really generate business. Of course, they can have a first project for them or selling a printer, etc. But I'm questioning whether they will have a sustainable business still in 10 years with the same people. Yeah, you have a good perspective on that, too, because of your background in construction. So I'm sure you've seen the, the two contrasting kind of personalities of the guys with the, the rough calluses on their hands from working all day and the guys that are sitting behind the desks in their suits with soft hands from typing on their computers. I, when I was eight, my father said during the holidays, dude, don't bother your mother. Go to the construction site and work with those guys. So since I was eight, <laughs> I'm wandering over the construction site. I placed bricks, I, uh, I made concrete walls, uh, placed floors, etc. Um, and, and then afterwards, I started to study bachelor and master. Um, so I'm really lucky to have that kind of experience. Um, I believe that if I didn't have that experience, we wouldn't have been able to come this far. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then I'm always also lucky that um, we don't have an investor or um, uh, people that say, ah, here you've got a 1 million or 2 million. That means in the early days, 2013, 14 and 15 and onwards, we always had to be creative because we didn't have the money. So we had to find for creative ways in order to achieve, to develop the technology. Um, if you would give us back then $1 million or 1 million euros, I think we would have developed a really ugly machine that eventually wouldn't be that successful as it is currently. Uh, so mm -hmm. that um, practical and creativity uh, sense in everything from the beginning of on, uh, I think is really relevant. What? How do you manage the the relationship between your more labor focused aspects of like building out kind of the? I guess maybe you subcontract a lot of that work. But um, we, sure have what we do is if we have a, a project, we are a general contractor. Uh, so in that um, entire process, we build, the, we print the walls here ourselves. Then we transport them to the job site. We have got subcontractors for the floor, for the roof, for the windows and the installation. Uh, so we've got partners to do so. Not electrical and plumbing? Yeah, plumbing, for example, uh, an insulation company uh, for oh. uh, plumbing. Uh, the installation is also for heating and cooling. Um, and we've got a sp also the building concept that we've developed. Um, it's a, not a typical floor. It's a special floor. We've got special roofing system uh, with other innovative companies uh, in order with that um, to come up with a concept of a house that um, as the entire house is being built fast and affordable. And printing concrete is just one of the elements within that building. Uh, but also the other elements uh, for which we hire subcontractors um, are innovative. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage the electrical? Is it inset in the wall or is it like yeah. with CMU? Um, during printing, uh, those facilities are being placed by the operators. And um, a lot of uh, those facilities are also being placed in the floor. Uh, there is a, a certain floor system that a company here in the Netherlands has developed, um, which by within what, just one week, uh, they can uh, build out. So they can excavate and then um, build and pour the concrete with the reinforcement and insulation wiring. Um, and then a week after we can start assembling the rest of the building and then connect like plug and play uh, the electricity wiring, etc. I'm really glad to hear that you're putting in the electrical as it prints because that's like 
it, that's using the technology rather than just figuring out a traditional method to slap on at the end. Yeah, um, as one of the things we're currently developing is, um, and, and now the operators, they get a list on paper uh, when to place what. But what we want to do is that they have got like those good uh, glasses and then they see, of course, oh, yeah. what you, you see what you have printed, but then you see in augmented reality what you still are going to print and then also where to place what. And you've got that real so life cool. data and information back. And then, um, because currently I don't believe in 100% automation in the construction site. Uh, first, this automation of such a machine, and it is about people are going to work with robots. And you need those the information back from such a robot, for example, with those augmented reality glasses, something we're currently developing. What percent automation do you believe in, let's say, uh, 10 years down the line and then 30 years down the line and then 100 years down the line. Um, do you know the uh, movie of Will Smith, I, Robot? Yeah. And then he's in the big house and then I don't, the demolition robot is standing next to it and then he's in the house and he saves a, ca a, ca a cat. Um, in the end, probably it will be that kind of automation. Um, but how quick it will develop towards that, um, there are a lot of hurdles that need to take uh, to be overcome. For example, one of them is quite simple, insurance issues. Yeah. An insurance company has got difficulty to insure what we are doing. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, we currently, everything is insured, but our partners, their insurance companies, they've got difficulty to ensure that they are printing, which is actually a nice opportunity for our insurance company because they can insure. Um, but a lot of these hurdles need to overcome. Um, as well as standardization, uh, uh, regulations, municipalities need to get uh, acquainted with it. Um, I think for that perspective, we're st still really at the beginning. Um, from a technology perspective, um, uh, uh, we and I also see other companies, they're pretty good in developing the technology. That's also not the most difficult part. It's, yeah, you can develop technology, it's easy. Um, more the uh, legislation, uh, the uh, insurance, the standardization, uh, that will be a big uh, hurdle that we, the industry is currently taking step by step. Um, and then of course the industry itself, uh, people need to get um, uh, uh, trained in order to design and engineer and operate the machine, etc., etc. Architects, they need to learn how they can, what they can design and what not, um, etc. So I think for the upcoming 20 to 30 years, um, a lot of things will happen. A lot of things. That's also why we started the SIP Academy, because it's about education. Currently, we're working with some schools here in the neighborhood. Um, uh, also, we're starting to work with the universities, of course, that have our printers to provide classes, um, which is a part of the SIBA library. Um, and I hope that that in the upcoming years will have a good positive impact. Um, because if you have a printer and you don't know what you can print with it or how to use it, and actually you don't have anything uh, uh, for the printer. Would you ever make that library or the course um, public or open to sale yeah. for the public? Um, currently, because we developed it with a, a partner, the website developer, I believe in, uh, within e-commerce. Um, uh, so th uh, that library is being used for e-commerce. Um, eventually, um, uh, our partners, they get access, which in, is within their service level agreement. And then uh, there is a free license, uh, there is a, a standard license and a pro license. Uh, so they give a different kind of access. Uh, it's a monthly um, a fee. Um, we're in talks with universities so that students, they get a free license per se. Um, currently, uh, since I believe mid-June, um, it was delivered. Uh, our team is currently um, uh, uh, providing, uh, getting feedback for of our current partners in order to improve it by September, that will be done. And then hopefully by October, we can um, uh, uh, launch it and have it open uh, for uh, yeah, the rest of the world. Cool, so you guys are taking the software very seriously. Uh, yeah, software is really important. Uh, either way, for uh, we've got Chisel to slice uh, a 3D model into a G-code. We've got Artisan to control the printer. Uh, we've got uh, on Rhinoceros uh, a lot of tools that we can provide um, uh, through the uh, CB library. Um, and uh, uh, we've got the parametric tools. Uh, so the parametric uh, models that in which you can design something. We offer also on uh, the library so that clients, they can download printable models. 
um, I think that's more, even in the beginning more relevant than the printer itself. Hmm. Can yeah um, uh, ease up the entire process. And printing is just one small part in building an entire building. Um, so if someone took one of your models and scaled it down, would they be able to print it on a desktop plastic printer in PLA? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's possible. Probably Sometimes a lot easier. Um, it depends which uh, uh, plastic printer you have, because sometimes the, the element is just falling down and then you've got like uh, after the print like this pile of plastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's coded to just be one layer thick or one, one layer wide, right? Um, in, in the programming as opposed to most, like I know uh, within I have- chisel, uh, Within chisel, um, you've, got, you've got the out, outside layer and then you've got also, depending on uh, the structural principle, different kind of infills that you can select. Mm -hmm. which is actually quite similar as, uh, for example, the plastic, which you're in for. Yeah. Um, but indeed, uh, we print one layer um, and then nothing. And with plastic, normally you've got more layers in order because it's really thin. Uh, I guess that parametric design is really an important part of the design process for efficiency sake. True. And if we can provide on our website, uh, the Siebel Library, uh, tools in which our clients, they can just download the models, that means that they don't need to hire an architect anymore, which saves them money and time. Yeah. And Would there ever be a solution where someone could design their own custom unit? Uh, yeah, um, like uh, the wall elements, um, uh, 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 they are like, we've got like four or five different kind of wall elements like Lego, uh, which with those wall elements, they uh, people would be able uh, to assemble their own building or design their own building. Yeah, that'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. Especially if you implement the VR with it, like they got the headset on, they're designing the building, maybe in the That's place. They want to put it. And there are still a lot of challenges, challenges, complications in order to develop all that kind of technology. Uh, but that is some Thing where the future will go to. Yeah, I mean, something like that, it just seems like, yeah, like you're saying, it takes a long time to develop, it's complicated, but the pieces, all the different pieces of technology kind of like exist now. So when you- oh, yeah. um, it, 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 Such a robotic arm, they're, they're there since like the 60s. Uh, the mixing systems, they're like, the material we have is like 30 years old, it's just making the right combination. And from a technical perspective, it's not that difficult to make the right combination to be able to print. In the last couple of years, I always say that everyone, every, every, everyone can print. It's not that difficult to print concrete. It's also not that difficult to create an organization around it. And the more, dif the most difficulty is um, uh, to make a business out of it, uh, to create an internal team uh, that is capable to work together and which is multidisciplinary. And moreover, to make sure that you acquire sales. So that means that you must be faster and cheaper because otherwise you don't sell a printer. And I think that um, uh, we are doing pretty good in that. And I see that our competitors, uh, either they get investments, which I don't believe in, or they work together with a big construction company. They get a big part of that. And then they only work um, uh, for their own construction company. So they print a staircase for that construction company or other stuff. Um, but I don't, yeah, uh, it's, I don't think that's the way it should be. Yeah. And since you haven't taken investment, you have the choice in whatever you could wake up tomorrow and decide you only want to sell printers and you have that right. True. Um, uh, uh, of course we are open for investments as long as uh, maybe in the future, as long as that will increase the growth. Um, mm -hmm. and currently we are determining, okay, next year, 100% growth. That means 20 printers selling and delivering. And that means this amount of houses, etc. The year after again, again, again. So eventually either we change our business models or we add activities, or you need such partners to work together with in order to cope up with the, the, um, the growth ambition that we have. I like that you haven't adjusted your growth model due to the illness. No, yeah, 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 no. Um, uh, 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 actually, the growth for this year is already being achieved. Um, uh, so yeah, that makes us now in a position to start making the preparations to do the same trick uh, uh, again, increasing 100% of turnover for next year. 
And of course, um, we analyzed in 2015 to 16, we already did 100% growth. But then it was a really small amount of money. But currently, it's, every year it gets more complicated. But on the other side, uh, selling like this year, delivering 10 printers, eight or 10, um, and, and of course, that gains a lot of credibility. And if our partners are also printing and they gain credibility, then there is a growth model, uh, 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 yeah, a pretty big growth model in that. Yeah, it's such a new industry. The, the possibilities have barely been discovered. It's like just the tip of the iceberg. And I feel like the design possibilities are so endless, but they haven't been experimented with yet. It's going to require all kinds of innovative designers, architects, thinking in totally new ways to really get the benefit from this kind of technology and the equipment that's developed. True. And we are learning. Like on our shirts, we've got learning by doing. And that's also something we're doing every day. Um, and, and, and also testing, doing things like the reinforcement, uh, breaking things, uh, adding new materials, um, but always uh, with one goal in mind. Uh, it should add up to building faster and cheaper. Uh, What's the best way to break it? Um, for example, that pillar that you just saw, um, we filled it up with water. And we had a similar pillar um, uh, without the reinforcement, also filling up with water until it collapsed. Um, other ways is, yeah, just build a big build a wall. And um, uh, we hired, in this case, TNO and then put a lot of forces and add the forces up until it broke. Uh, only the wall that you saw uh, the last pieces of, the wall didn't broke. Uh, the equipment broke uh, of the research institution. Um, we've got our own pressure tables, so we can print small elements or we can uh, create small elements and then um, uh, uh, put them on a pressure uh, around 120 ton and then wow. see what it whether they break and then we can compare that for example with similar elements without reinforcement uh, different kind of reinforcement and see from pretty practical essence uh, what the impact is and then that small pieces that was, will be eventually a starting point to further develop um, uh, uh, the technology as well as the business case yeah there's like a million data points you need to all pull in together yeah actually it's quite easy uh, you only you've got actually four points you've got a shape of uh, an object You've got the factors like earthquakes, wind loads, etc., and you've got your material with the properties. And then those three, they will determine your, your strategy, your building strategy. So we only control those four um, and we play with those four. If we change the material, that will impact the shape we can make or that will impact the amount of factors we can uh, withstand, as well as eventually the printing strategy. Um, so we those are like the independent variables and then you have the dependent variables of like the location, the, the humidity, the temperature. Yeah, the, these are all factors. So you've got a list of all these factors. And then eventually printing strategy wise, you need to um, uh, uh, be in your sweet spot. And during printing, uh, the sweet spot can change uh, because those factors, they can change. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is some, we printed those elements um, uh, here in 2015 and 16. And we were thinking, oh, we can print, we are good. And then we went to Dubai and then we were like, what the fuck? We were printing when it was 45 degrees, totally different kind of climate. Uh, we've learned a lot uh, there in the desert. Um, uh, 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 so, and, and, and afterwards, uh, here in the Netherlands, it was like minus five. Also different kind of uh, factors that involved, uh, need to be involved. So uh, based on those real projects in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, in Milan, or printing uh, on an ex during an exhibition in Paris, uh, well, 600 people were watching. Um, uh, uh, also different uh, variables, uh, factors that uh, we needed to address. So, yeah. Well, we covered a lot of stuff. Cool. It's been a really uh, I'm almost running out of battery. I've got 12 minutes left. <laughs> All right. So let's. We should wrap it up. Cool. But thank you so much for speaking to me. It's been. Uh, been an hour and a half and went by really quickly and i learned a lot it's so i'm Welcome. sure that, that people are gonna appreciate the, the information that you're kind of bringing to the table on side see sea bay sea bay indeed it's tricky uh sea bay i don't know why it's like the pronunciation that isn't making isn't clicking for me no i can imagine it's typical dutch uh, way of pronouncing it yeah. uh, from one province so 
go it's back. a common issue with the with companies they're from countries where my american accent just completely butchers the pronunciation it's terrible mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta adjust my uh i gotta show my american a little less mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I want to thank you for having me. Um, some other footage will be sent later on. And if you can add it, uh, some things, uh, I think we will back and forth it in, uh, during the course of this week. And that uh, we can see when uh, you will put it online. Yeah, cool. Sounds cool. great. Okay. Then I want to thank you. Yeah, have, have a, a great day. Thank you. You. Bye, Jared. Bye.